Hello, I'm Wade Nemer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the interesting things that Rotary does each and every year is they have an international convention, and it is held throughout the world in all different locations. This year, we had the privilege of going to Hamburg, Germany. For me, it was my very first trip, and also a first trip for one of our president-elects. This is Kim Fly. So, Kim Fly, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a Carpenterian. I've uh, lived in Carpinteria almost my whole life, and um, I was introduced to Rotary through both of my parents. Uh, my mother was um, involved in the Carpinteria Club. I don't me remember exactly what year, but my father, he was in uh, Raton, New Mexico. He was, uh, became a Rotarian in 1998, uh, was the president in 2001, 2002 year. And um, then he passed away in 2009 while he was a Rotarian. Mm. So, did you ever live in Raton? Never for three that. months. I for went and lived months. there for three months. Okay, and reason, I went to some Rotary meetings. Did you? The reason yeah. I was asking, I was there as a 12-year-old. I actually went through a tour in Cimarron, New Mexico for the Philmont Scout Camp. Yeah. Have you ever been there? I've driven right by it, but <laughs> okay. I, am not, I wasn't a scout, so okay. I never went to the ranch. Got it. Yeah. And we also have uh, Debbie Murphy, your mother I, and past president of our club also. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in Carpinteria for many, many years, like the 70s, and have been involved with Rotary for quite some time. I've been in this club for 11 years, and um, I've actually been to four Rotary conventions. Okay. And I'm uh, really proud that Kim is going to be the Rotary president of our club this year. That's right. Great. Which uh, were the other um, ones that you went to, conventions? I was in Osaka and Chicago and Lisbon and now Hamburg, Germany. Wow, so you have quite a few years between each of them. So uh, yeah. you get to see the transitions yeah, there. Yeah, yes. So Osaka, that was in um, what year? Uh, that's a really good question. It, it, it's been a while though, right? Yeah, well, while, maybe that. early, super early 2000s? Probably before No, before that, that. it was in the, in the 90s. 90s. Yeah, it was yeah. in the 90s. That's okay. right, yeah. So that was before I was in Rotary, so wow, great, good for okay. you. And what did you see as a difference, the transitions of the, two, of the four? Hmm. Have you, did you notice anything different or was it just the locations that were unique? I'm just always in awe of how many people come to the event. Okay. Just thousands and thousands of Rotarians from all over the world. And they come dressed in their, their traditional garb from their countries. And uh, it's just um, inspiring to see so many people. You just think of yourself in your little club doing things in a community. And then when you see all of that you realize what we do is happening all over the world. Great. It's okay. really beautiful. Good, good. Yeah. And Kim, for you, what made you decide on going to the convention this year? Well, it was my term to be president, and okay. I should definitely jump in okay. and check it out. Uh, I had been on the outskirts of the Chicago one okay. as a visitor during uh -huh. that convention, but not actually in the convention hall. Okay. Oh, outside. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So you're kind of so a I did there. see a lot of people from all over the world there, uh -huh. but I didn't get to be a part of the convention. Got so. it. Okay. Oh, yeah. interesting. It and really how many interesting. conventions have you been to, Wade? Uh, I think thirteen. Yeah. Wow. I missed. I missed two. Um, when my when Roxanne was was ill, I had to miss Sao Paulo and Seoul, Korea. Okay. But all the other ones since. Chicago, I've been mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Okay. And again, all unique, all interesting. And what have you seen changed over the years? Good question on that one. Most of it kind of follows the same format. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more important, the transition for me was the interest of, of areas, getting to travel internationally, getting to see areas that I had never been to before, mm -hmm. including uh, Hamburg, Germany, first time for me in Germany. Um, but I think the transition for me, more than being in different areas and seeing the change in the conventions, is that my network of friends become greater. And as we become bigger internationally, we have more opportunities for this reunion. So every year, the reunion happens at the mm -hmm. International Convention, where I'll meet back with two, three, four hundred people that I've met from around the world each and every year. And we plan on doing that. So I think that's the biggest part. And it me. was shocking to actually run into you. <laughs> just walking around there. How many people were at the convention? 20,000? Yeah, there's about 24,000. And 25, the odds 000. that we would run into Wade Nomura at the convention <laughs> in something other than our small group meetings was uh, ridiculous. But Very, very true. But for, for me, the general sessions were ones that I usually miss. I only went to the opening and to the closing because everything else was meeting time. Mm. So that was interesting. How about you, Kim? Did you make all of the uh, general sessions? I did not. Okay. Yeah. Which, which we, ones fascinated you of, of the sessions? 
Well, we went um, we went to the opening session, okay. and then we went to um, classes, and that's what we did. Okay. And then didn't get to go to another session. Okay. So we had to, we didn't have a full experience, I guess, is the whole. Oh, no, you no, know? you did. I think I think the opening one's pretty impressive. Yeah, right? yeah, it was yeah, I, th I think personally, the opening and closing are. And th I hope they cut this out and edit, but um, those two are probably the best of these sessions, mm -hmm. the opening and the closer. Okay. Enjoyed both of those. Good. Well, so, I really enjoyed um, just like connecting with people that were from our area, too. That's then true. Then you're seeing them in another world and another, you know, experience, and you get to that's a good run point. into them on a street in a foreign country. Okay. It's, wow, it's amazing. That, that is very good. So I brought some pictures um, that we can reflect back on, and we have some time. I want to go over some of the things that you oh, brought good. with you. Good. So we'll start in with the pictures first. And with that, the first photo we have is actually um, a photo of a big party that we had. This was a district party. And if you want, you could tell us a little bit about your experience at a district party with people coming in from all four counties. Well, it was like going to Oktoberfest in, in June in Germany. Uh, people were uh, so excited from other countries. There was a, a group from Taiwan next to us <laughs> that were jumping and screaming and guzzling beer like crazy. <laughs> uh, they were so thrilled to be there. And then it kind of got us a little revved up, and we started standing on our benches and having a good time because it was so hot in there. And Right. Now, this picture was taken with the coastal view, which we do as a tradition. Uh, this is what we get into the... Uh, the local magazine newspaper. So this is all a bunch of carpenterians that we ended up with, in, which is great. It was surprising to see the outside of that building, which looked like a small restaurant. And then as we walked in, we walked by groups of 50 and 100 Rotarians over and over again in different parts of the restaurant, True. trying to find our group, which was... Um, well, no one was actually there, so we couldn't find That's them, but true. we were early. But. At, at the time we were there, there were actually five different rotary yeah, groups in Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. So the next picture we have is actually us sitting down with some of the people there. And uh, I remember it was pretty crowded. We had over 100 people, I think, from yeah. our district yeah. there. Yeah. And they gave us 90 spots, so we were scrambling for, for seats there. But it was, it was a good time. Um, for you, did you get to meet some new people, some different faces, friends I, from around the district? Yeah, and I really appreciated meeting people's um, significant others. Because oh, people, yeah. you know, it was Rotarians, but then they had family with them. And mm -hmm. it was nice to uh, connect with them and find out, you know, who's the other people in their lives. Right. And just a simple thing like that dinner, I know will create relationships that will create grants, that will create fabulous things happening in the world just from true. some crazy thing like a dinner. That is Germany. true because the partnerships become a lot yeah. easier with the networking. Mm -hmm. Picture of you two here. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was good. This was, I believe, before food because it took two hours to get our food, right? It did yeah. take two yeah, hours so you're looking before pretty hungry there, they both brought of you. the food. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> That's us sitting up on top of the seats, yeah. And uh, here's another picture with uh, Kim taking a picture with the uh, incoming president, yep. Mark Maloney. That was good. Now, what do you think about the experience of actually having Mark just randomly show up. You well, know, he randomly party. showed up at our district event, too. So it was this like, true. he likes us, I think, this is, this is true. He does like you. <laughs> they were actually having a meeting next door with 400 of the zone people. He's from the um, southeast corner mm -hmm. of the United States. And because there are 400 of them there, um, he did, uh, well, I'm friends with Mark, so he says, well, show me your district. Oh, uh, let me, nice. Let me come by and see everybody. So he made it a point, so it was great. Now, he's very outward, very nice yeah. man. So. I like that you always bring the big wigs around. <laughs> well, it's good to meet the international <laughs> leadership. That helps. Yeah, okay, a picture of the food. We want to talk about the food? Uh, when the food finally the got there, that was crazy. Those were um, pork uh, knuckles, I believe is what they're called. They might be called Einsbein, but that might be a different mm -hmm. form of pork knuckle. It was delicious, ridiculously good. There was more food than we needed. That yeah. one tray would feed 30 people, and it was served to eight people. Right. This is yeah. true. And it, well, at two hours, half the people have left. So yes, that's true. We that had was to a eat bit twice more problem. as much. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I think there's chicken underneath there. There, there was, was there was so much stuff hidden under that pork that we didn't <laughs> even know until the end of the meal. Yeah, there was knockwurst, uh, potatoes, sauerkraut, fish. <laughs> uh, some chicken That's nuggets. Right. They had all sorts of things That's underneath right. it. And you even some see starch. There's some potato in there, I mm -hmm. think. There was somewhere. <laughs> and one woman actually took bags of it to she take did. out to uh, homeless yeah. people. This is uh, one of my friends who actually ran into each other in Hamburg, Germany. Um, 
We actually ran together in track. So this is Ramsey J. Back in high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So he, he's in Rotary. He's actually, I think, in Rotary before I was. And when is, where is he located now? He's uh, down in the Santa Paula area. Okay. So he's a member of the Santa Paula Club. Right. So that's, that's where I met him um, at Santa Paula Club. Hadn't seen him for about four or five years. So it's mm -hmm. funny. Even high school people get back together yeah. in these <laughs> odd international trips. Yeah. This is a picture of the, uh, the hall, the actual general session. The first one, it was the old one. There were so one. many people in that room. It, there was. And believe it or not, there's actually two of those. I know. So there's two opening and sessions. And both were, well, not, yeah, sold out is probably not the right word yeah. because it's not like we had to buy an extra ticket to get in there. But both rooms were so packed, people True. had to leave. It yeah, was the, so there, many people. There were actually 10,000 seats in that hallway. Um, were there? For each session. Wow. So they, and they filled up to 10,000 both okay. times. So that was impressive. And there was an overflow area also. The most impressive thing about that general session was watching the young Rotarians, who are the youth scholars, mm -hmm. carry in the flags of every country that is in Rotary. That is true. Yeah. And announce them. And, and announce say, them and honor yeah. them. It, it was so beautiful. It made yep. me cry. Yeah. That, that is tradition. That happens each yeah. and every year. And every year it's just as uh, emotional. It is. Seeing, seeing those flags yeah. and seeing how big. You're hearing little groups of people is. in the room cheering for their country yeah, all over this 10,000 people room. Very yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this again is a picture of the opening. Uh, Haresh is a uh, past district governor from Barry's, uh, President Barry's district. So mm -hmm. that's why he was the MC for the event. Did a great job. He did. Uh, he's a in great entertainment, job. as yeah. you probably figured out. But uh, a lot of uh, Barry's team was actually on stage. Mm -hmm. This is the, um, the lounge. I don't know if you had a chance to go into the lounge, which is a second room. It's actually off the main one there. And they had drinks, food, all kinds of things. You could order and do whatever you want. It was air conditioned better than the other places. Really? So that's what I found yeah, out. Yeah, missed of that. Of course, on the last day. But <laughs> it was the overflow place. It was yeah. the overflow place. And some of the VIPs actually sat in there okay. for the first part. Uh, again, some of the seats there, you had um, seating that had food that you could order from, drinks, uh, pretty much everything. They had lounge chairs, sofas, everything. And then in the front, they had actual sitting areas. Now you tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. Next time if they have it, we'll have to go. This is the uh, House of Friendship. So. But that's before people were in there. That looks really empty. This was when we were setting up. I actually was working in three of the different booths. So okay. I, I took an early picture because it was easier to get this picture, even though, as you say... There are not a hundred people in each aisleway, so you could actually walk through it. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. But there are two halls, um, which was right. interesting. It's yes. the first time we actually had two. Oh, halls. was it? Okay, yeah. There was a lot of stuff to see. There was a lot to see, and I believe, uh, from what I heard, Hawaii is going to be the same way. Okay. We'll also have that. Um, in the House of Friendship, we had the um, preparing for the next international convention in Hawaii. We stopped by there. And this is the host organizing committee. Mm -hmm. And um, they were there promoting it, getting signups and pushing people into signups. Now, um, I could officially say this now because it's probably going to be aired a little bit later. But in Honolulu, Hawaii, there's only going to be 25,000. They're going to cap it at that oh, because okay. of the size of the venue. Oh, yes. As of Hamburg, Germany, on the last day, there were already 15,000 people signed up. So, oh my goodness! Yeah. So okay. just to let you people yeah. know, jump in there early and yeah, get the sign get there. up going. And I think it'll be hard to get a hotel room unless people book now. Two thirds to three quarters of hotel rooms are already booked. Also, okay. so everything's going okay. extremely fast. One of the opportunities uh, I had was actually to meet with some of the people there. This is a group from uh, India, and actually, we at that point in time we were preparing and signing a global grant. To, hmm. to do projects there. Oh, okay. So um, this is done in conjunction with the Rotary Club of Bakersfield. Okay. So and what kind of grant is it? This what one here is helping? educational. Uh, okay. It's all about supporting schools. There are about, um, I believe, fifteen to 20,000 students that have been benefited from this project. This, and this is a series of grants. Okay, So it, it's a great one. But you get to meet people that you never get to see anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, which was nice. Now, question to you. Did you meet anybody there? Um, somebody that you think you'll be able to stay connected with. The RAGS, uh, okay. his, I don't remember his name. Rotary but, Action Groups. Yeah, yes. but the, the man that kind of started RAGS, he was um, 
we, well, we had a long conversation with him, and okay. that's the Rotary Action Group for Endangered Species. Oh, yeah, right. It was really good. And it was surprising to find out that within that group was our, um, the, the people that are in our club in Guatemala are actually part of that group because they are saving the bees saving in Guatemala. Bees, which yeah. actually started in Chile. Oh, did it? Our, our, cl our, our club in, in Chile. Chile actually started okay. it. It was adopted by us and uh, by Guatemala. Guatemala mm -hmm. took it on. Yeah, so that was pretty Roma, amazing to meet the amazing. man and find out that we were already part of it. It was awesome. <laughs> that is good. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, another opportunity we have. We get to meet with international staff people, people we don't get to meet um, on a regular basis. We have uh, Marcelo there from Brazil. Um, and Tusu actually is from um, Nigeria, so we got to meet together. We usually speak by phone. We're in completely different time zones. We never know who's up at what point in time, so this is always a good opportunity mm -hmm. where we get to meet with those people. These are the ones responsible for the Rodi Foundation cadre um, changes. So this change is going to occur at the international level where we will actually be serving as assistance for clubs and districts to do global grants. Great. So that's going to be the new change that we're looking at right now. Okay, here we go. We're going to jump in in Hamburg. Into, yeah, we're jumping into Hamburg. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, did you get a chance to ride on those canals? We did. We okay. went uh, We went on an evening cruise. It was quite beautiful. And we ended up on the cruise with a lot of people from our district. It was just random that mm -hmm. um, that they were also on this cruise. I think beautiful. we tried to get you on it too, but you... I Scott was up, trying to get you on the trip. Yeah, unfortunately, I hadn't ended up with meetings, which yeah. kind of happens for me. But I'm glad you guys got to enjoy that. Yeah, it was good. So did you hear a little bit about the uh, canals and the waterways? On, it was amazing how much water is in Germany, first of all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was that you that it. told me it was uh, Hamburg was one-third water? Really? No, I didn't, but I that's heard, amazing. I heard that. It's one-third water, one-third open space or parks, and one-third residential and buildings. Hmm. It was a perfect one-third mix. The canals were actually developed way back in, I think it was the 1800s. They used the water to actually build the city. Oh, and okay. And so they, instead of bringing in boats, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, instead of bringing in trains and uh, wagons, they actually used the waterways to build the city up. One of the things I loved about Germany was their public transportation. And True. in Hamburg, yeah. you had the public transportation of the waterways as well. And... Uh, since we had our rotary badges yeah. on, we could get on any of the transportation anywhere. One of the huge advantages, yes, as you know, going to international conventions, they usually organize it where we always have access to the public mm -hmm. um, transportation. Yeah, it was good. It is good. This is a picture I took of one of the, it's a burned out chapel, and I guess it shows some sort of significance for the history of the area. But um, it stands out, and it was huge, right in the middle of town. So I just took the picture because it was dramatic. You can yeah. see it from everywhere. And uh, again, some of the waterways, and I don't know if you noticed, but um, there's a high and low tide that occurs there. This is that low tide, extreme low tide, and that, um, I guess it's a, a barge area there, actually hit all the way down to the ground when the water went out. That's amazing. It is. It's usually about... The buildings were big there. They were all yeah. eight, ten stories tall. True. That is very and, true. Um, but it left so much more open space. Green space. Yeah. Everywhere. Where, True. you know, we, have, we kind of have a theory here of like shorter, <laughs> spread out more. And I, I wonder sometimes if we're missing out on our public spaces. True. Yeah. True. They are able to condense that for more mm -hmm. public space. Okay, we're going to go through these really quick because uh, our incoming governor made me go to the red light district just to get pictures and see what it looks like. So... Just for, for pictures. Exactly. Fortunately, I was able to shoot some PG shots here. So just to give you a quick view of what it'll look like there. And I said I was going to do this to the our Governor Sabi because, just because I could. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and uh, one of the traditions, I don't know if it's just in Europe or in Germany or what, but they put locks on all of these bridges as they I've go I've actually over. seen it around the world. Yeah. I saw it in China. I it's, have too. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it too. I've seen some in Japan and... A lot of times with areas. like a marriage ceremony, people will right. put a lock but on there. Just about every uh, bridge had these. Yeah. Um, some of the other pictures, and I, I was going through, I must have saw tens of thousands of these locks. And the one that stood out to me was this one. Oh, that's amazing. I just amazing. happened to walk by and see that <laughs> one. It just jumped out right at me and got me. So I Rotary. took a picture of yeah, it, right? Yeah, good. In the middle of the town, way far away from the convention center. 
Some of the promotionals, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but pretty much all of Hamburg had these uh, pictures showing, showing uh, and storyboards promoting uh, Rotary. Rotary. Yeah, I felt very welcome there. This is uh, Scott Phillips uh, from our district and his mother, Jan. And there's a couple of pictures we saw on a pretty regular mm. basis. They really talked about it. First one was in German, and then the next one, uh, of course, in English. Yeah, and the flags were everywhere. The flags were everywhere. And they're beautiful, by the way. Um, I took a picture of this one only because it's kind of reflective of the area, Hamburg. Mm -hmm. Really unique area. Yeah. And I guess, is that the one you actually have? I have that one blowing. Okay, so we're going to get that one, and we're going to show it here shortly. So we're going to put that one in so we can see it. And for me, one of the areas I had to walk through on public transportation, they dropped us off on the other side of the community garden. Oh, so this is so that I beautiful garden walk, that you got to walk through. I had through. to walk through the garden every oh, day. Oh, nice. It was probably close to half a mile across yeah, that thing. Yeah, it was big. Beautiful. They had a Japanese garden. So, of course, you know, I had to stop and get yeah. pictures of this Japanese garden. And that's pretty much it for, for the slides that we have. So we do have some time. Let's run through what you brought back. Well, it wasn't a bunch. It was just walking through the Friendship Hall. There was goodies kind of everywhere, like okay. rotary goodies. Like this is a rotary and polio now. Uh -huh. And then also pins. And you could... Um, let's, let's hold that for the, for the camera. Uh, they were selling pins and shirts and nice, everything nice. of gear that you could get for rotary all uh -huh. over. Socks. Socks. With a new True. theme. True. And what did you think about the House of Friendship? Other than the vendors, wasn't it pretty fascinating, the people you meet there? Yeah, I really, I really loved the, um, the people that did Shelter Box. Oh, yeah. Get, mm -hmm. And any of those ones that were relief organizations that went into where disasters were. And, True. Um, wherever it was a tsunami or an earthquake or right. a hurricane, okay. wherever they were going. Okay. Yeah. And you could tell Rotary just shows up and takes care of things. Uh -huh. It was... Um, it's just really inspiring. It's so inspiring, all the different projects that people were there and distributing things about their projects. Mm -hmm. It was great. I, um, for some reason, I got the food products. I don't know why. Um, I think that's always, isn't it? Maybe so. Someone gave me uh, teas from uh, somewhere oh, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. I think we Sri all Lanka, got those. Sri Lanka. Is that from Sri Lanka? I think so. Okay, that's probably from Rob. Pure yeah. Ceylon tea. I. Yeah, from, I don't. What, from what I understand, uh, Ravi Ramanujan, past international president, actually this is has, Ravi here. Yes, that's his nice picture the on the largest... back there. Is that Ravi? It's hard to say. It's a small uh, yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, he is the largest. Uh, what does he do? He actually makes wraps um, for those uh, okay. for the teas. Oh yes. And so he is the largest manufacturer in the world for doing that part of it. So they were just handing apps. these out to everyone who came by the booth. I'm like, okay, I'll take some tea. And then um, there was another company that, uh, a rotary group that was um, selling these chocolates. Uh, and okay. I bought them because they were supporting something. I don't remember right now okay. what wonderful thing they were doing. But um, it seemed like something I could bring back to our Let's rotary hold club. That up, hold that up and... Put sure. that in place there? Yeah. Nice. So it was something nice. that I thought I could bring back to our Rotary Club as a raffle item and support what they were doing. Good idea. Yeah. And then one of the funny things we got was one of the groups was handing out badges that said, I love Bakersfield. Which, <laughs> you know, here we were in Hamburg. I think I got and we one picked of those. up <laughs> two of those and we brought them back to two people in our club that are from Bakersfield and okay. they were so happy. Who, who are those in our club? Carrie, Carrie and, and Donette. Donette. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is good. Yeah. The badges were from Quan. Oh, I did from get one from Quan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that came yeah, from exactly. Quan. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your experience. What did you take away from it? What do you remember most about the International Convention? That, um, that we can make a difference. As an individual, you can make a difference in the world through you know, humanitarian effort and even through things that I enjoy, like animals, endangered species, that might actually support a community by having you know, something that, you know, an animal viewing area that maybe supports a whole community. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. That is true. How about you, Debbie? What makes you keep going back? Um, I, I was struck by this one exhibit. There were these beautiful, clear globes, maybe this big around, and they were taking seawater 
and using sunshine to make pure water. And all it took was solar power to do it. And, um, you know, I work on the sanitary district in Carpinteria, which also works with the water district, and people are always looking for water. And here we live next to the ocean, and sure. this man had invented these fabulous things where you could actually produce many gallons of water a day just with these globes sitting on a beach. Hmm. I, it was just kind of wondrous. And to think that people out there invent these things and then they have some partner in Rotary that helps get them promoted, it was, um, it was just a good plan. It so is good. Everything is really good for the planet that I saw. Good. Yeah. And how about you? You planning on going back? Did yeah, another one? I did. Okay. Yeah. How about, uh, are you going to Hawaii? I'm thinking Hawaii and I'm thinking Houston. And Houston. I don't remember the one in between. Taiwan. Okay. There's Taiwan, oh, interesting. Houston, and then the one after Houston actually uh, has been announced. It's going to be in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, okay. So well, I know so. who's going to that. <laughs> <laughs> A good possibility. <laughs> very good. Actually, I'm hoping to make uh, all of those coming up because each and every one of them are going to be yeah. pretty special. And what moves you about the conventions? I think it's being able to connect with the international people that I've met throughout the world. Um, what's fascinating is you and I ran into each other there a few times. We have all ran into each other. But I also ran into those international people that I hadn't seen maybe since the project mm -hmm. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, one of the people I remember running into was a past governor from Belize. And he was the first governor to invite me in as a, public, as a speaker for, oh. for their convention, their conference. Okay. And so I got to go there, and I just happened to run into him. So mm -hmm. we, do, we don't stay in contact all that much, but when we see each other... It's always very cordial when we get to have dinner out or you know mm -hmm. sit down and talk. Did you lead a class there? Um, I actually led five sessions. Okay. But thanks for asking. Okay. That. Yes, I did. Um, I was in charge of a lot of the training for the uh, foundation. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're kind of running out of time on this one, so well, thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you. I hope uh, to see you again, not only at the club but at the upcoming conventions. Okay. You will. Excellent. Thank you, Wade. Thank thanks you. for thank doing you very this. Much. And with that, everybody, take a look at the International Convention. See what they have to offer. But more importantly, plan on going to meet people and see how international Rotary really is. With that, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.